Greetings and salutations, it's Burr with FOM, and I'm here with more multinational magnetic musical mischief by mail. It's another laundry cycle. The song in the background was called Wax Wayne Repeat, and it was collaboratively written and recorded by four people using Porta Studios and Post Offices as part of February Album Writing Month. FOM is an annual challenge to make as much new music as you can in the shortest month of the year, because you can. Now, old school cassettes have four tracks on them. Conventional tape decks are able to play and record these in stereo pairs, an A-side and a B-side in opposite directions. Well, four track decks, also called Porta Studios, are special in that they can play and record each track independently in the same direction. That way you can build up a song bit by bit. For years, farmers have used this retro technology for experimental collaborations. And this video tells the story of this cassette as it traveled almost 3,000 miles from Canada to the United States to become a new song. So without further ado, let's roll the tape. Hi, I'm Alex Clagus, also known as Metalfoot in Farm, and uh, this is my seventh farm. I've been farming since 2016. Absolutely love the FOM community and the opportunity it gives me to make music with people from literally around the world. This is the infamous brown couch um, that I keep referring to in my songs and uh, it's just my favorite spot to create music. It's a very comfortable couch. I've got my recording computer here, got a four track machine down there, and today I'm going to try to create the first track on the uh, second tape for a four track one tape challenge so we'll see how that goes this is the four track machine i'll be working with this year a tascam porta studio 03 um, i bought it over ebay a couple years ago didn't quite work brought it into a local electronics fix-up store and the fellow there was able to get it working and functioning again the other hiccup that i've had is I ordered some cassettes for it back in early January and they still have not arrived in the mail. I have here an old Bass F Chrome Extra 2 cassette, but decided it wanted to be an X cassette. It is pining for the fjords. It has ceased to be. So I think I found another tape I can use. It's an older pre-recorded cassette. It looks like it's Chrome or at least some sort of Type 2 tape. I don't know, we'll find out. I really don't mind repurposing it for this purpose. It appears that the adventure with the tape recording worked. Um, so here goes nothing. This is gonna be an attempt to record a click track first. Now once I got the click track together, I'll fiddle around with some other stuff. Don't know if I'm ready to record yet, but at least I'm getting an idea of what I want to do with this. Because of family commitments, I have to be out a good chunk of today, but we'll see how this goes. I've got a click track on uh, track four. And so I'm gonna be doing kind of something in E minor here. All right, good luck to everybody else on the tape. I think that one's a keeper. I think I'm done with my recording. My tape here is ready. I've got my notes scribbled down on a sheet. Um, so hopefully people can figure out what I did. I'll find a padded envelope somewhere here and get down to the post office before it closes at five o'clock. Let's get this thing into the mail, shall we? I'm Nancy Rust. I have been farming for 17 years, incredibly. Today I am going to be putting track two on tape two. I just got the uh, the envelope from Alex, the metal foot in Canada. I'm gonna take a listen. Alex has helpfully uh, attached a chord sheet. That's not always a given, but it's really, really helpful. Anyway, I have the chord structure, I have the count in, and I'm gonna take a listen. Here we go. Gentle acoustic guitar strum in a minor key. This sounds like maybe something I could sing over. It's, it's got a definite mood to it. Oh, interesting. So it's going into a major key section now. Just thinking about what instruments would work with this. Alex included a very nice uh, message, personal message at the end. Um, I'm. I'm probably going to try to uh, to write lyrics to this 
and do some kind of a vocal. Sometimes that does not come easily, but this seems like it would lend itself to that. So now it's the next day. I have had a chance to listen through the song a few times. The first thing that I've had to do is find the form of the song. So I have the list of the chords and how many bars they are, but as far as constructing a lyric and kind of a structure that the other musicians are going to be able to follow too, I need to determine where the verses and choruses and bridges and things are. It's it's not uh, it's not an exactly parallel structure. The second thing that I've done in making this lyric is just to give myself a subject to work with. And because it's close to the full moon right now, I'm going to make it something about the moon. So what I've done is this little, uh, the start of this map that just tells you um, some things that are related to the moon, the uh, silver of the moon being like quarters for laundry. I don't know if that's going to stay in, but uh, this is just, just a technique that I use to get my mind moving. So we'll see how this goes. I'll report back. I did end up going with the moon and laundry nexus for my lyric. It was fun. It gave me somewhere specific to go. I have a melody and I'm going to try and get that practiced quickly and recorded quickly. It's already two days after receiving the tape and I want to make sure and get that in the mail and we can get this done in time. It's another laundry cycle like cycles of the moon it's february 17th and i am mailing this off to eric today hey there my name's eric i am on farm posting under the name stand up and i'm located in a basement in washington dc primarily a bass player though I play guitar, and I can play keyboard parts that involve two fingers or so. All right, so let's see what we've got here. I've got lyrics, I've got a chart and some notes, and I have a cassette. Here we go. There's guitar and vocal. It's about laundry so far. Minor chords, nice melody. Oh, switching to major chords. Yeah, different mood. I think I'm going to play a bass part to kind of give it some low end. It might be a little bit of a hopefully tasteful, busy part because there's a lot of space here for something a little more expansive. I think it's short too. It's probably two, two and a half minutes maybe. All right, I'm ready to give this a try. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Well, there's a mistake. We'll do that again. Take two. Here we go. Take three. Take four. Take five. Take six. I got the track done. I got the tape today. Got the track recorded tonight, and it goes off to Burr tomorrow. It's a little tricky in that the, the chord changes are not absolutely consistent. I had to write out, you know, a chart that would really help me follow along. There's a major key section in the middle, so I had a I had a delay going for the minor part to give it sort of an eerie, large sound. And I switched that off for the major section, figuring that's more of a straight ahead bass part. But vocals are done, guitar is done, there's a bass part, so that leaves Many possibilities. Percussion, maybe, might be nice. Some sort of keyboard that could be another chordal instrument to kind of flesh things out and give it a little bit bigger, a bigger sound. I think that might be nice. We'll see what he comes up with. Hey, people. Look what I got. It's a tape from one Eric Agner and his conspirators. Four track one tape, tape two. Okay, so this tape started in Canada. <laughs> it looks like whatever this is was taped over a Tooth and Nail Records uh, cassette 1027. Let's see. Rob Walker strobe from 1996. But in the meantime, what else do we have here? A roadmap. We got lyrics, so it looks like somebody else hopefully wrote the lyrics and sang, so I don't have to do that. 
All right, so that was kind of a slow, moody ode to doing the laundry. I feel like this needs some kind of percussive elements, but maybe also some kind of pads that come in and out. It's always difficult to add percussion when you're in the track four position because that's where the click is and you'll be recording over the click. That's the reference point that everybody's using. We'll see what we can do. Uh, after listening a few more times and, and thinking about a few different things, I'm gonna try to multitask and do some uh, secondary vocals. So I got my SM57 going into a, a preamp pedal into one channel of the four track. Uh, then I also have my Korg micro Korg keyboard that I'm gonna do some weird psychedelic synthy things. And then I'm also using this Octopad and a shaker also with the microphone. The, the piece has multiple different parts to it. Uh, and so there's kind of gonna be a psychedelic part and a little more straightforward part. And then I've taped the lyrics here uh, so that I can read along. I don't know if this is gonna work keyboards, percussion, and vocals uh, all in one take, but, you know, we'll do what we can. Check. All right. Uh, looks like all the different things were indeed getting recorded. I think we're ready to go. Take a swig of water. It's another laundry cycle. Like cycles of the moon. Repeat again. All right. Uh, I think that might have been the take. The percussion actually comes across all right. The mix is all right, and I'm keeping the shaker in tune, in in rhythm, which is good. Uh, yeah, it's good enough, but I think the mix is going to be complicated. Both Eric and I, both the bass and everything I did, kind of have these different movements, these different parts that switch, and I probably want to EQ and pan and maybe affect them differently. Um, so yeah, I'll just do that on the computer. Okay, so I've been working on the mix for a while, and the acoustic guitar is one single track throughout. However, the vocals, bass, and then my part, uh, so tracks two, three, and four, there's this middle section, which is kind of very different, so I, I kind of broke those out and made little copies, and then it goes back to uh, the original, and they're processed differently. And there's a little bit of panning uh, for the acoustic and the bass. The vocals have some delay and reverb on it. The backup vocals and synth part has like um, an automatic double tracker, and the, the percussion part and the bass both bases have like compressors. I spent longer on this than I usually do on four tracks mixes, um, but I'm happy with the result, I think. Let's throw it online and see if other people are happy with it too. <laughs> That's a great synth intro, the kind of wavery psychedelic sound and there's some nice bass coming in like cycles and the vocals the double track which is nice i would never have expected that actually harmonies i was not expecting that spinning round the spinning feeling to everything is just really awesome here so, you know, it started as kind of a straightforward folk thing. And that element is still there, but it's become something much more interesting. The bass has a lot of reverb on it. I don't, I don't think I put that there. I like how the bass comes in in the spaces. I was thinking some sort of acoustic rock piece would come out of this, but this is not that. This is way cooler, actually. This guy wants to listen a lot. Yeah, I like the 
how the instruments are coming into those spaces between the vocals. So here comes the percussion, all right. Very different kind of uh, soundscape. I love the, the pants he's done here lyrically and his wise vocals. I guess what happens is you can hear more percussion and uh, no synth now. The <laughs> nice little break, then we're back to the synth stuff. Laundry cycle. So we've gone from the laundry list of laundry to the uh, like so to the lunar so part, I guess. The lunar planetary part. Wax and wing. I like this laundry core thing. This should become a bond thing. We do laundry course songs every year now. That'd be awesome. Wax and wing. Repeat again. Oh, that was over too soon. <laughs> that was really good. That was just awesome. I would never have expected my simple acoustic guitar progression that I started with would turn into that gloriousness of kind of psychedelic pop. It managed to balance both the the folkness and the the weirdness that I put into the lyric. That song, the finished recording has a nice arc to it. Great job, everyone. I'm really happy with it and surprised by it. And surprise is always a happy thing. Thanks everybody for making that happen. I think it's great how Metalfoot's stream of consciousness acoustic guitar ended up laying this very meandering, non-linear foundation for uh, Nancy's Lunar Laundry lyric, which stand up further amplified uh, with two very different bass parts. And by the time it got to me, there was this well-defined middle section at double speed, even though the original guitar part didn't change cadence that much. That's an awesome, unexpected result of the Falm 4-track challenge. Oh, and I look forward to seeing more Laundry Core songs next February. If you have questions about Falm or 4-tracking or this song, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Also, we've got more tapes in this series, so do the whole like, subscribe, bell icon thing to get notified of future episodes. And thanks for watching. Learn to play, play to learn, rock on.